Yes, sir. We are ready. Yes. Sir, we are ready to go. Right, right. So should we start? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, would you go for an introduction or I should start on my own? So you can start now. OK. Uh, well, thank you, Gaurav, for inviting me to this event being held at IIT Kharagpur called Shitis. 2021. Uh, I'm very, very delighted to be associated with this pool of highly talented students of IIT Kharagpur. It's highly recognized and acknowledged faculty and very able leader, uh, Professor V. Tiwari as director of the institute. Uh, the whole world knows that IIT Kharagpur is fifth ranked technology institute of the country after IIT Madras, IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, and IIT Kanpur. I went through some of uh, the research recognition associated with the institute, and I could notice that in research, it is fourth ranked after IIT Madras, Delhi, and Bombay. In science and technology, India published somewhere around 1,90,666 papers as per Scopus database in 2019. And in last 10 years, India has published almost 13,22,000 papers in science and technology domain. And IIT Kharagpur has contributed 21,766 papers, which is around 1.64% of the total publications in science and technology. And it is ranked under different parameters, either at number one or at number two, as far as science and technology contributions from uh, Indian institutes are concerned. One could also notice that in social science research, in 2019, India published 27,470 papers. And in previous 10 years, India has published 1,24,900 some papers. To my delight, IIT's share in papers in social science domain is again, close to 1.6%. And it is ranked at number three after Delhi University and Jawaharlal Nehru University. And it is then followed, and that too very distantly by IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, IIT Roorkee, and Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Jadavpur University, and IIT Madras. Again, one can easily see, looking at the research contribution of IIT Kharagpur, one could notice that even in agriculture research, the share of IIT Kharagpur is very impressive at 1.05%. Whereas all other IITs are way behind it at around 0.5% of the total publications or below. Putting research contribution of an institute, nation, and the topmost institutes of the country, let me try to slightly look at the new education policy, which talks about all spectrums of the education, which includes higher education, technical education, and 
research landscape of the country also. We are all aware of the situation in higher education and the new education policy 2020 definitely makes sufficient mention about the state of affairs. It also captures where we need to improve, where we may not have done so well as we were expected to do. And it also talks about in technology or technical education, it also talks about that how different institutes of the country, including IITs, NITs, and an Institute of Science, and professional institutes like IIMs have been performing. We know, as far as national institutional ranking framework is concerned, the performance of an institute is to be assessed on basically five broad parameters teaching and learning resources, research and professional practice, graduation outcome, outreach and inclusivity, and peer perception. We know a score out of 100 is given on these parameters, and then an overall assessment out of a maximum score of 500 is done. We also understand that uh, among Indian Institutes of Technology, there are five top five to six institutes which keep replacing each other uh, in terms of ranks and scores on the stated parameters. Uh, if I talk in terms of the overall score, as I said, that uh, IIT Kharagpur is ranked fifth uh, at fifth position among the technology institutes of the country when we talk of the cumulative score of 500. Another important question that emerges out of this performance assessment of different institutes is that uh, the way different institutes, universities might be performing in the country and how they among them are doing excellently one or might be doing excellently one on one parameter and may not be doing so well on another parameter of this ranking framework. We also understand and uh, people in higher education and especially those who have been associated with researchers in the country they can appreciate uh, that a normal issue is raised that how much are we spending on researchers in India? How much do we need to spend? And finally, what should be our targets in terms of researchers? Of course, uh, the new national education policy talks about increasing uh, government's spending or investment, not only on education, but also on research. And it also makes a mention about a new coming, uh, the broad umbrella for the researchers in the country called National Research Foundation. We also know that despite the fact over last 10 to 15 years, India has been doing pretty well in terms of publication. The growth of our publications is much greater than the international averages. But another point of concern that emerges, despite the fact we are doing some good publications over last 10 to 15 years, is that we may not be performing so well in terms of innovations. And in innovation, we are not still ranked as a significant country in the world. In science and technology publications, we know that we are among the top few performers 
our uh, ranking is ranging between three to five. I'm very happy to share with you on this occasion that we used to be 12th ranked in 2015 in social science research publications, but currently we are ranked at number eight in the world in social science publications also, despite the fact our total investment on social science research is only 0.025% of the GDP. We know that uh, as in science and technology publications, uh, IITs, Indian Institute of Science, NITs, they have been in the lead. Similarly, in social science publications also, there are certain leading universities like Delhi University, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Jadavpur University, and then we have ICSSR funded research institutes also, which have performed very well uh, in the past uh, 20 to 30 years or maybe more than that. And they are definitely going through some orientation change also in the recent past, in the sense that social science researchers are definitely coming closer to solving the problems of the society, nation, and are expected to move towards policy assessment and contribution in policy formulation. And this is why the focus of researchers in social science has moved from theoretical to applied and now to policy oriented researches. Here at Indian Council of Social Science Research, our basic task is to promote research, advise government on socioeconomic, cultural, international relations, health, gender, transformation, be that rural or be that urban transformation, strategic issues, psychological, education, business, industry, employment, related issues and subjects. This list is endless because there are several issues of importance before the nation. I would speak about how research themes, they differ over time in few minutes from now. The basic idea is that, that in terms of research subject and topics, nations and institutions are not supposed to stagnate. They must very quickly be changing their orientation towards the need of the hour. And this is where perhaps the institutional uh, credit in terms of impact, in terms of publication, in terms of its recognition, and also in terms of its contribution to policy making, they definitely lie. We could notice how topics of researches, topics of researches in the recent past, or even historically, have been undergoing changes. One big change that the world could easily observe in the context of all kinds of researches, whether science and technology, or agriculture, or social science, or medical research, one could notice that researchers are becoming increasingly collaborative. When I say that increasingly collaborative, I essentially mean that within the country, institutes which are working in the same or the similar area, they are collaborating. Institutes from the country are also collaborating with foreign universities and research institutes. Another interesting uh, 
direction that we see in the area of research is that the researchers are getting increasingly interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and on number of occasions, even transdisciplinary. And they are definitely gaining as far as the focus or the visibility of research output is concerned. I think this idea definitely must have gone very deep into the minds of the policy makers of new education policy. That new education, especially higher education and researches, must move in a collaborative manner towards interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and transdisciplinary fields or areas. We know uh, almost 40, 50, or 60 years back, the whole world was basically discussing the disciplinary boundaries in terms of researchers, where the basic belief was that that researchers have to be essentially focused on narrow issues in the interest of better analysis. But now the emphasis has definitely shifted to holistic approach, more inclusive approach, and general applicability of the research output. It is why I think two years back in 2018, somewhere towards October, November of 2018, I remember that almost four to five months prior to that, we were preparing some initial notes for the, the policy call impactful policy research in social science, which is popularly known as Impress. I remember that we were discussing what should be the thrust areas for inviting research proposals from the scholars of the country. And after a good amount of deliberations with all interested stakeholders, we finalized or we could finalize 11 domain areas with more than 100 subdomain areas. The list is too exhaustive. And those of us who may have gone through the impress document could see it under different domain and subdomain areas. But here for the interest of and for the quick and easy interest of the audience, I could just talk about some of the important areas and some of the important subdomain areas also which were finalized and they would throw some light on how social science research in the recent past is getting reoriented towards solving the problems of the society, nation, and maybe the globe wherever it is possible. Under the domain of state and democracy, the focus is now there on welfare state, federal state, regionalism at international level, borders, securities, or defense policy. Very interestingly, diaspora, identity of a nation, and society, they have come into focus. In Indian context, India as a soft power, portrayal of a nation at the global stage, relations with the neighbors, region, and the world, they definitely are the main subdomains under state and democracy now. And of course, performance of a, of a democracy is an ever important issue. Under urban transformation, one could notice the issues like cities and sustainability, smart cities, city or metropolitan governance, the problem of traffic, congestion, 
migration, these issues have definitely caught the attention of the potential scholars. Media, culture and society, they are also being viewed as an important domain. And under these, this domain, media types, content analysis, social media, including regulation, governance, autonomy, and privacy, and even issues like ownership and control, they have definitely invited the attention of the good scholars. Apart from that, family system, religion, women empowerment, and inclusion of marginalized section of the society, they constitute another interesting area under the broad domain of media, culture, and society. Under rural transformation, scholars have been interested in agriculture, reforms, the recent idea of doubling farmers' income, agrarian distress, diversity of crops, optimum utilization of inputs including water, productivity, infrastructure, transportation, schools, technology, and during pandemic times, we all know that what was being talked about uh, with the help of technology, how education could be ensured even in the rural areas. Demographic changes and Panchayati Raj institutions. So they constitute a good expense of the studies or projects or researches under rural transformation. Apart from that, there is increased focus on governance, innovations, and public policy. One could easily notice that public policy was not as much in focus as it is now, some 10 to 15 years back even. Every day we are coming across research-based literature or otherwise also on good governance, e-governance, smart governance, innovations, governance and technology, and even since the degree of corporatization is increasing with every passing day, so the very idea of corporate governance also. Under the domain of growth, macro trade, investments, including foreign investments, the major issues which are being covered are poverty, inequality, ease of doing business, credit or asset quality of banks or non-banking financial companies or intermediaries, new initiatives by the government such as Make in India, Jandhan, Aadhaar, Mudra, public-private partnership which used to be in focus in 1990s is again in focus and I think until the problem is resolved and mindset in this connection gets altogether reoriented, this issue will continue to be of primary importance in our case also because there is a growing realization that public sector has got its own limitation especially in a democracy which is as i mean which is quite big in indian context and apart from that the government size ever since this debate on economic reforms commenced in early 1990s there is almost a growing degree of consensus that the size of the government activities, especially in commercial area, has to be kept to the required minimum only. 
and then there are issues related to the problems of informal sector we all understand that how health has acquired a very important dimension of a nation's life including the research in a country or society we can all recall that two years back uh, universalization of the health facilities was being discussed and the present government at the center came out with a solution also but this pandemic covid-19 has made health are uh, still and perhaps a uh, still more important and perhaps the most important issue in the present times and issues around health are the infrastructure related to health after so many years of independence none other than the prime minister was talking about hygiene when he was conversing with the people on swachh bharat toilets and related kind of things and under hygiene or health infrastructure we are also talking about equipment major ailments disease burden of the society during pandemic times of course we did dwell on immunity over last 10 to 15 years there is a growing concern about the care for the elderly population or old age people a special care for women and a special care for the children also so and maybe the health or assuring health facilities or health care to the remotely situated population of the country undoubtedly climate the issues pertaining to environment pollution of different kind congestion they ha they have also also been in focus uh, as research subjects in the recent past and almost every issue is somewhere when we talk of industrialization it somewhere get mixed with the issues related to climate also and approvals related to the very starting of industries in the country when we talk of urban transformation climate again becomes one of our major concerns even if we talk of rural transformation then also we talk about it so whatever developmental activity we talk about including infrastructure uh, on the sidelines and maybe sometimes uh, as the basic and the core part of it we do try to address the issues related to the concerns of environment disasters is another interesting and has been an area because climate because there are natural disasters and there are man made disasters also and somewhere there is a growing concern that even natural disasters are somewhere triggered by the the negligence of the human kind Uh, whether we talk of pandemic or floods or cyclones or avalanches or even issues like global warming we are talking about one or the other kind of disasters and so capturing disasters in research studies trying to find their solution and addressing those issues in the interest of the entire human kind so that we could deal with such issues and problems uh, for many more years to come that being the idea that being the central idea of researches which are concentrating on disaster disaster management 
reducing the cost of such disasters or managing disasters very well, at least without involvement of the human cost. Education and different uh, types, different ways that people could be educated uh, is again attracting the attention of the scholars uh, across the world. Uh, the recent, during pandemic time, the recent focus has been on physical uh, vis a vis online education. And then we have been talking about technology liberated learning, scientific temperament. I was making a reference to rankings, learning outcomes, leadership, and it has it did attract the policymakers' attention in NEP 2020 also. Resources. In education also, there is a big debate and big research around public-private partnership or dichotomy. And another important issue one could recall that when Prime Minister talked about skilling India, definitely there was uh, a kind of inference that could be drawn that perhaps our education is not or has not been able to impart the kind of skills which were expected of it uh, while we try to compare the degrees of the students with their skill levels. So in very brief, what I'm attempting to say is that perhaps skill levels are not corresponding to the degrees which are being awarded. So that is another issue of big concern uh, for the entire nation. We know there is an appreciation that reforms are needed at every level, be that political, administrative or bureaucratic, be that academic, social, judicial. And I would go on to the extent of saying that reforms are also needed at the level of research in the country also. One could again observe that there is an interesting thing which is happening and that can be observed as well. That number of disciplines, because I raised the issue of interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary researches also. So one could notice that number of disciplines are converging also. Economics, sociology, politics, international relations, law, and number of disciplines in science are also, for example, mathematics, they are converging with even social science and policy related disciplines. If I talk of citations, which give credibility to researchers in a country, uh, I would definitely like to go through uh, in few words about uh, India's citation performance. Approximately 6,400 researchers are named as most cited researchers in 2020. Some 3,900 are in specific fields and remaining 2,500 are in what is termed as cross fields. That means they cannot be assigned a single field and they largely belong to interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary kind of researches or citations. In the list of highly cited researchers, we have a US, uh, which has out of 6,400, which has a share of 2,650, which is 41% of the total. Uh, most cited people in the world. China at 770, which is 12 percent. UK at 514, which is 8 percent. Germany at 345 is 5.4 percent 
Australia at 305 is around 4.8 percent. Canada at 195 is contributing 3.1 percent. Netherlands 181 at 2.8 percent. France at 160, 2.5 percent. Switzerland at 154 uh, is 2.4 percent, and Spain is 103 at 1.6 percent. We do not figure in this list anywhere. And that should be one major concern for the entire nation. Another interesting thing one could notice is that despite the fact that our publication rate is much more than the growth rate at the international level, uh, both in science and technology and also in social science. In science and technology, one could notice that last five years, our growth rate of publication is more than 5%, whereas in social science publications, our growth rate has been more than 20 to 25%. Last year, it was 34%. So in India, uh, I mean, accepting this fact that one, we do not figure among uh, the best institutions of the world. Two, despite increasing our share in publications, uh, our share in citations is not increasing to the desired extent. If I look at the list of most cited subjects or areas in Indian case, uh, one could notice journal psychiatry, computational science, ecology, climate change, sustainable development, population studies, business management, social media, information science, data management, investments, cultural studies, healthcare or health science, cosmology, and in the recent past, artificial intelligence, molecular biology, analytical chemistry, medical mycology, genetics and plant breeding, biochemistry, biotechnology, and applied mathematics. They are the areas which have, which do fall in the category of most cited areas as far as India is concerned. We know that NEP 2020 attempts to discuss world-class education in terms of imparting a skill level and uh, still more importantly making an impact at the international and national level in all these terms it definitely talks about going about a world-class education i mean there has been a belief also that perhaps and there has been uh, an apprehension somewhere, I think, which needs to be resolved uh, how far and to what extent India constitutes a scientific society. We should not be doubting ourselves. And there are ample reasons to believe and firmly believe that India has been a scientific society since very ancient times. Our seeds of knowledge creation uh, in the ancient times included Takshila, Nalanda, Vallabhi, and Vikramshila like universities. They were not providing education to the people belonging to India, but they were also seeds of learning for the best scholars of the world. In number of foreign accounts relating to India or which have tried to capture India and India's knowledge creation, it is a proven fact that they, they, make, they do make a mention that if somebody did not study in India, came to India for learning, one's journey of a scholarship was never treated to be complete. 
Uh, we were as ancient civilization, we were known for Harappa and Mohanjo-Daro, urban civilization, city development, metallurgy, mathematics, surgeries, Arthashastra, and apart from that, grammar and language development, architecture, music, arts, literature, festival, costume, and even justice. So we had a very big canvas as far as uh, scientific society, even in ancient time, India as a scientific society in ancient time is concerned. These developments, such knowledge creation in the fields that I have just enumerated, spread our influence beyond frontiers, our own borders. And since our belief was basically sustainable development, which is why we tried to give an intergenerational equity in terms of endowment of natural resources and thus guarantee the sustainable development. We all understand that the modern world has been witnessing very quick changes, transformation, shifts, including paradigm shifts. They have become very common things over the last 50 to 100 years. New topics which have definitely taken the attention of the scholars include water resources, population dynamics, big data analysis, energy production, conservation and consumption, social biology, neuropsychology, cyber security, and not only plainly healthcare, but social health care. So these are the issues which have definitely caught the attention in the recent past. Today there is no research even in science and technology which is completely different or away from the sum or the other kind of social science dimension. Of course, the topic for researchers over next 10 years will be how to link local resources, talent, products, researches with the world and how to make them part of the global value creation or supply chain. After Prime Minister's articulation on Atmanirbhar Bharat, the self-reliance and self-reliance was definitely getting the attention of none other than the United States like country also. And many countries we have seen in the recent past, even in Europe, that they have also been thinking in terms of uh, making some strides towards uh, self-reliance because the issues even before the developed nations today as they stand they include unemployment uh, somewhere transformation whether as a rural society or as urban society and ensuring participation of all in the national mainstream. Another issue which has come into uh, a greater reckoning is overburdening of the urban infrastructure. And uh, pandemic has definitely uh, invited a greater attention of ours on the issue of migration. So all these club together, they have been very well articulated under Atmanirbhar Bharat or in terms of a broader issue, self-reliance, without compromising on the global network 
or global links or global cooperation. Uh, I think all of us are aware that subjects of researches, they keep changing over time. There was a time when Cotillia in 324 to 296 BC was talking about Arthashastra, which is a treatise on statecraft, economic structure and society. We know how Al-Baruni also in 1020 AD tried to take an account of India's society, religion and culture in his book, Tariq Al-Hind. And how different researchers at different points of time have tried to give to the society the issues of importance in their viewpoint. For example, Asiatic Society of Bengal in, nine, in 1784, Benares Institute in 1861, and Bengal Social Science Association in 1867, they gave impetus to social science research in India. One can easily go back and see how Dada Bhai Noroji, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, M.G. Rana Day, Raja Ram Mohan Rai were talking about the issues related to Indian society, culture, freedom struggle, and even issues like poverty, discrimination, liberty, independence, justice, inequality, famines, violence, rule of law, self-determination, and even social events during their times. Because those were the issues of importance during those times. And how this focus shifted after India's gaining independence in 1947. And so from 1947 to 1969, our issues of emphasis moved to poverty, illiteracy, imbalances, underdevelopment. And remember towards late 60s and early 70s, our attention was shifting to self-sufficiency in food grains and food security being the most important issues during those days. Apart from that, in late 70s and 1980s, uh, the focus was on productivity, increasing productivity of agriculture, going about industries and even nationalization of the commercial banks in the country. But in 1990s, with the beginning of 1990s, again, we went towards uh, almost a 180 degree change in our uh, research orientation as the basic subjects of our research in policy and social science domain moved towards liberalization, globalization, privatization, and reforms. And as I said a few minutes before, <clears throat> that in the recent past, some more issues have definitely gained momentum in terms of uh, being research subjects. Uh, expenditure or investment on research, as I said in the beginning, is said to be Another important aspect, we do say that U.S. is spending 2.8% of GDP, Israel is spending 4.3% of GDP, South Korea is spending 4.2%, whereas India is allocating 0.8% of GDP and is actually spending somewhere around 0.7% of GDP on researchers. Another important fact in Indian context is that that Indian research expenditure on investment is largely coming from the public sector and is still the share of private sector is almost negligible. If I talk about top 10 countries uh, in terms of global R&D spending, then top 10 countries account for more than 75% of the spending on research and development activities. And the share of US alone stands at 25%, whereas that of China at 23%, and Japan at nearly 8%, and Germany at 5%. Uh, though India's share has definitely, in the recent past, last 5 to 10 years, has increased to 4%. But 
but if i talk in terms of per capita expenditure on r and d uh, i think uh, india being uh, a very large sized economy we are fifth largest in in terms of gross gdp and on purchasing power parity basis we are the third largest economy of the country but yet as far as per capita expenditure on r and d is concerned uh, we are far far behind and uh, i i don't think that we would be holding any significant position at the global level but when we talk of spending i think we essentially need to talk about the productivity of those expenditures also and as i said similarly the productivity of research expenditure should also be assessed in terms of citation and also the rate of conversion of the publications into our applications for patents in respect of innovation where perhaps india's record is not very good and from international standards we have not been performing well on uh, innovation front Uh, we are a young country our young population constitutes more than 64 to 65% of the population we are a country which is highly and heavily aspiring also and we intend to take a lead role in knowledge creation and knowledge dissemination also and it is very difficult to think of attaining any leadership at the global level without being a very highly capable knowledge creator and disseminator uh, since uh, i'm largely addressing an audience which pertains to oh, technology institute so i think at an early stage in indian context the quality of phd at the early stage of the careers of the young researchers is very very important and it needs i think uh, full attention of people in the policy making and also people who are at the helm of affairs in such academic or research institutions of the country because it finally results into capacity building which continues in one's life till one continues to do and publish researches i think top indian institutes can and must learn from the best global institutions they must definitely learn through collaborative efforts the best research practices orientations methodologies and try to publish with expected amount of rigor and robustness which may be in the initial phase which may happen in the initial phase in a collaborative manner only best institutions like yours can take responsibility and do the hand holding of other institutes or universities by training their young scholars and faculty in researches i think this is and very broadly india's path for researches and a broader mission statement with very well specified path and the objective statement along with very well set targets is the need of the hour and i think with with this and with a vision for next 20 to 25 years which may go beyond that period even i think we need to have or we need to set our very research agenda for the nation which can further be distributed over the best performing institutes in terms of 
their respective contributions in that research agenda. With these words, uh, my compliments and thanks to the organizing team of IIT Kharagpur. And I'm very moved that young students uh, have organized this event, of which I'm also a part. Uh, with these words, I'll stop here itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable time. And Thank you, sir. We are Thank grateful you. for sharing your experiences and delivering and imparting guidance to all of Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.